Hello friends. Now today we will be discussing about the dengue management. In previous lecture we have discussed about the dengue management in the home that is outpatient setting. Most of the dengue manage patient you have to manage in the outpatient and in the home. Okay. So dengue management in home setting includes what you ha I have if you remember correctly I have explained in previous lecture if you are not uh, seen that then go and please watch that video it is very important to understand because most of the 99 percent 90, of the your cases will you will manage in outpatient setting okay the patient the what 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 were the management management was since the patient was having the fever you, you need to do two three three things okay first thing was to manage the patient out setting, you have to follow some certain thing like you have to follow the CBC, you have to follow the platelet count is decreasing or not, okay, then uh, hematocrit is increasing or not, hmm. then sign of dehydration, sign of warning sign and also when necessary is the phase of that is febrile phase, once febrile phase is gone, the critical phase begins, so you need to follow up the patient in critical phase, you have to educate the patient about the febrile phase is gone, it doesn't mean that you are okay fine the 24 to 48 hours is very critical and that point at that point any complication can arise so it is named as a critical stage you have to be aware and educate the patient about the end of the febrile phase and beginning of the critical stage okay then coming to the management fair management you are managing fever for fever i have told you clearly that we will manage the fever only with the paracetamol and with cold sponging okay there is no do not use do not do not do not use what aspirin ibuprofen or other other high msid level that can cause gastric irritation that can cause gastric bleeding even steroid you do not use if they don't know anybody's lot of a lot of the uh, malpractice of work doctor they are using steroid if nothing is going to improve do not use that it will increase the bleeding okay since we have managed the fever then you have to manage the see the sign of dehydration if there is a dehydration or not because the major component you have to address is dehydration so dehydration sign if there is a sunken eye say uh, sunken frontal inter baby okay in infant then no tears no tears for the crying baby then also also obviously about a decreased urine output and other condition like uh, cold cami skin anything is there sign of dehydration or decreasing then you have to address it okay and for addressing you need to give the fluids okay allow the plenty of fluids fluids should not include only plain water it should include any form of water any form of fluid it can be with a uh, soup it can be with juices it can be with the other form of the fluids plenty of fluids okay this is very important point okay then you have to check for the management of that patient in the house to prevent the dengue infection to the other house member and for that you need to make sure that the patient use a bed net okay they use a rally pen during the fever okay and also use other house member use the mosquito net kill all the mosquito in the home okay bury all the uh, sources where a mosquito can breed this all needs to be addressed and then finally look for the warning sign if there is any other warning sign then you have to think about it okay so that was the management in the home setting okay in the outpatient setting but once a patient develop warning sign you have a presumptive diagnosis that came with the you know no, i have discussed in the previous lecture about the presumptive diagnosis you have confirmed with your rapid diagnostic kit or elisa or rt pcr or by seeing the ns1 or you have demonstrated the antibody depending upon the way the patient present present initial present there will be ns1 positive okay but later for a fifth day the antibody will comes into the play role okay now when we comes about the patient with presumptive diagnosis confirm now develop the warning sign if the patient has warning warning sign i have group and classified into two groups that is group b and group c group b is warning sign with risk factor risk factor includes what that may be a diabetic that may be pregnant that may be infancy that may be renal failure that may be uh, due to poor social economic condition this condition we could group as group b and group b should be managed in hospital because he already this group has already have warning sign with presumptive diagnosis without warning sign you manage in the outpatient setting okay and while managing outpatient setting necessary 
management with follow up the certain reports of cbc plate okay hematocrit level china dehydration critical phase education about the uh, critical phase end and beginning of the no so crit, no, febrile phase end and beginning of the critical phase these are very very important because most of the patients will manage in the outpatient setting now comes to the patient develop the warning sign and not the feature of some so they are not category of the group C. I will discuss about the group C in the next lecture. Okay, because that is the management typically in the ICU. And you will find rare cases. We have only I think three or four days in our countries and be, despite of such outbreak. So that kind of complication will talk about it. Okay, but the measure of the patient will be our patient setting, and some of the patients will be in the group B that develop the warning sign, but not in the SOC. So you have to manage in your medical ward. Okay. So what will be the management to look group B patient admit to the hospital first okay these are the initial inpatient management of a dengue with morning sign okay now when you have admitted into the hospital you have to check for maintenance fluid input output and encourage oral fluid intake so the main aim is you have admitted he is not he or she is not in the soft now you assess the patient maintain your input output chart if the input output sound is okay encourage the oral fluid fluid okay if he is checking and now you assess does the patient have adequate oral fluid, fluid intake or not okay i have already told you many times that even i have suffered from dengue then i know it it is a time where patient is so thirsty i used to i used to drink at least eight liter of water more than that even we we, we are in i was admitted now i i used to bring the mineral water and around eight to 10 liter of that mineral water from morning to evening it gets to be and the thrust is so high that you have to remember so does patient adequate oral fluid intake is out of you have to maintain strictly if there is yes the patient is taking adequate fluid you you should be clear that any patient if he or she is not taking 20 liters of water then only there is a problem of water intoxication so you not think that okay he has taken a lot of water there will be water index intoxication plain oral intake fine kidney is fine it will all the water will be excreted so you don't have to worry about fluid overload or third place there will be leakage of the water in the third space that is related to the high fluid management problem. so oral intake encourage how much he can take then does patient have adequate oral yes if it yes then adequate oral fluid intake is there then continue monitoring the vital signs now you have to not do nothing to do you just to monitor the vital sign if it is stable it is going to feeding it is maintaining okay so that is you have to know monitor continue monitoring the vital sign if observe early sign of shock or warning sign of severe observe for the and while monitoring you also have to observe for the is there any sign of shock is there any sign of the warning signs more severe dengue sign if there is not maintaining you maintain continue monitor the patient if the patient input oral fluid intake is not adequate now what you do now the point is that you need to check the hematocrit level and give ice i intravenous isoconic crystallite solution crystallite solution and what normal saline ring the electrolytes you have to be assured that you should give only isoconic solution no hypotonic no hypertonic okay if you are not understanding the consequence of hypo and hyper you are you all know about it. If you are not, then we will talk, talk about when I will teach the USMH section. Then I will explain you that what are the <coughs> consequences of hypertonic and hypotonic. Hypertonic will lead to the intracellular dehydration and I am <coughs> going to use hypotonic. Then what will happen? The fluid will leak again. So never use hyper or hypo. You have to use isotonic and that is normal saline and ring lactate that you have to understood. Okay. So we will check the hematocrit. Why we are checking hematocrit? Look, so hematocrit level indicates that if you get the baseline initially, okay. Now if it is any increasing means water is leaking out and your hemoconcentration is developing. That you have to understand. So check the hematocrit level. Start IV normal isotonic solution. I am repeating again and again, and that is normal saline and ring lactate. How will we start? What will be the rate of the given flu? Initially, you start with 5 to 7 ml per kg per hour. You either start NS or RL, give 5 to 7 ml per kg per hour for 1 to 2 hours. So, you, you say, okay, you are giving for 2 hours. You start with 5 or 7 or 6 ml per kg and give for 2 hours. After that, 
you reduce that. If you are given with 7, then you come to the 5. If you are given with the 5, then 3 ml per kg. Just after 2 hours, you give 3 ml per kg per hour for 2 to 4 hour. So, 2 and 4, 6 hours. You have given fluid for 6 hours. Initial 2 hours you have given 5 to 7 ml. Then, let, next 4 hours you have given 3 to 5 ml. Now, in till 6 hours you have given the fluid. Okay, the rate is initially high, then come down to the low. And now again you reassess the patient. You, what was the clinical reassessment? Your will be one hematocrit level and another will be the clinical ass assessment of your normal physical parameter, sign of shock, patient is stable hemodynamically or not, that you need to uh, reassess. If everything is fine, okay, patient is clinically st stable and there is no or minimal change in the hematocrit level, then your patient is improving. If their patient is improving, okay, then clinically stable or no minimal change in the hematocrit level, continue isotonic solution. You have given one fluid for six hours. Okay, don't confuse into the tables. I am just giving you patient was not taking adequate water. You need to now manage the water. You are you have encouraged the patient. If you, they are taking adequate, it's so fine. If you are not, then you have to give IV fluid. IV fluid will be isotonic. Okay, check the hematocrit level, isotonic fluid, normal sign of ring or lacquer gives. What, uh, IV fluid for 6 hours, reassess. Reassess if there is again check the hematocrit level. If the hematocrit level is normal, at the normal or no change and patient is stable, this 6 hours plus 4 hours, you give 2 to 3 ml of isotonic crystallite, 2 to 3 ml per kg per hour for 4 hours, 2 to 4 hours. Okay, so your 6 hours, now you have maintained, if suppose maximum 4 hours, then you have 6 for 10 hours. Till 10 hours, Initially was 5 to 7, you reduced to 3 to 5, now you have again reduced down to 2 to 3. So, the rate of fluid that you are giving, that is normal saline or ring or lactate, that need to be decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Okay, once you have decreased the fluid, now again reassess the percentage. If the clinical is stable, stable again reduce, reduce the crystal, that again reduce the normal saline. If you can give it 2 to 3, you can even go to 1, 1 ml per kg for one to two hours and then stop it and take since patient is not stable now give him more fluids okay IV fluid is not necessary are you getting clearing about it okay if again now you have the patient who has not able to take oral fluid you have maintained the six hour okay you reassess the patient was uh, if it's stable then fine if not going to the improving sign then there will be a worsening vital sign and rapidly increasing hematocrit level if hematocrit is increasing means is leaking out now you do need to what you should again go for the increase isotonic crystalline again you go for the normal saline and ring lactate for 5 to 10 ml per kg for 1 to 2 hour so you have given 6 hour okay if patient is not again improving what to do okay now we have given for 5 to 7 then 3 to 5 is not improving then you have to increase your fluid level initially we are giving low now you can go for 5 to 10 ml per kg per hour so your fluid amount will be increased. Okay, there will be a five to ten bolus of amount will be increased. Suppose if it is a sixty kg and you are giving uh, by ten, then it is six hundred ml. Now initially you are giving five is three hundred ml only. Then it comes to the three is uh, three is uh, around ninety hundred ml only. So you need to understand that when you you increase here the fluid level. Okay, once you have increased the fluid level, you have to again reassess. Here also, if there is no Change then uh, patient development is soft, then you will go into the group C management and group C management will occur the initially Christopher that is normal saline and uh, ring lactate if not improving then we will go for the colloids that the albumin contain uh, fluids okay colloids if that if there again we reassess and patient is uh, hematocrit is decreasing or the blood loss is there then we will go for the ERBC or blood transfusion we will discuss about it just confirm just concentrate over here this is the management of your patient in your hospital in your ward that when he or she is get admitted with warning sign and with other risk factor but not in soft if we got in soft we will go for the group C management and that will be in the issue okay so there is the one we were we had you have admitted the patient patient does not take the oral fluid you have given six hours you have checked the hematocrit give the normal saline was uh, initial for two hours then four hours then again reassess it was not improving then you increase the fluid intake okay you have given IV fluid at uh, five to ten ml per kg hour this was six then we one uh, say two hours then eight hours you have you have managed you have again reassess if the patient is what 
if the patient is improving then if not improving then you have to go to the group C management that is you go to the emergency or go to the ICU and manage the patient and we will discuss about it. Okay, there will not much thing, it is just about the management of the shock. So, there will be the since it is not improving with normal saline and the, and the ringer electrode, so we will go to the colloids, we will increase the fluid, we will go to the colloids, okay, we will go to the blood transfusion, that will come to that point. Just concentrate over here. If the patient is not improving, we will go to the group C management, but if it is improving and the most of the cases they will be improved, so you will go to if you improve it, now what was your rate of the normal saline? That was 5 to 10 ml per kg. Now since patient is improving, you come to here and in this stage, you reduce the crystalloid in stepwise manner. Okay, and reassess before each change. So you are giving 10, now you come to the 5 to 10 ml for again 2 hours. So 6 hour management, okay, 2 hour, 8 hour. Then again you have given this uh, for 2 hour, 5 to 10 ml per kg. Then reduce to 3 to 5 ml per kg for 4 hours, 2 to 4 hours. Then again reduce to 2 to 3 ml per kg for 2 to 4 hours. And then you can stop. Passage is stable. And the crack level is fine. Okay, and duration is maintained. Again, go back to the oral fluid intake. This is very important. Okay, this is the simple management of your dengue. But you need to understand that you need not to give large amount of IU fluid. You just have to manage in this step wise in your medical ward. This is very important. Okay, let me summarize very fast. Okay, uh, group B patient admitted to the hospital. Patient you see in you assess the uh, input output charts. Does patient taking adequate oral fluid? Yes, you continue monitoring only. If he is able to deteriorate, then you go back to there. Okay, check the hematocrit level, give normal saline. What will be the initial two hours, five to seven? Uh, ml per kg again uh, and then come down to four four hours three to five ml per kg so you have given six hours fluid the rate i have mentioned over there then you reassess the clinical status, status and hematocrit level okay if you improve it then again go back reduce the crystal level, level and finally go back to the increase the overall fluid intake if not improving what to do what's next increase the fluid intake more give for five to ten ml for two hours okay if the patient is now deteriorating we'll shift to the icu manage there according to group c management we'll talk about it if improving give again for two hours or six hours now this is two hour eight hour you have eight hour management then again you give two hour more of five to ten ml continue that five to ten ml, 10 ml per kg for two hours you have assessed you have now given 10 hours of fluid you again reassess then again reduce to the 3 to 5 ml per kg for 4 hours okay you again reassess if he is improving reduce down to the 3, 2 to 3 ml per kg for 4 hours your patient has equally adequately hydrated if not hydrated it will deteriorate then we will go to the group C if an adequate patient is great improving you will encourage go back to the patient to encourage the oral fluid intake and maintain the input output set if deteriorating again follow this stuff okay if you're going into the soft we'll manage into the issue okay so this is very important and why we why we are focusing on the management this is the cdc guideline okay and you need to understand that we have not to give the higher amount of fluid we have to give the fluid and if he is improving we'll reduce the down and then encourage the oral fluid intake that is important okay so see you in next lecture and i hope this is helpful Thank you and let's try this out back. Thank you.